Hi, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Happy Halloween to everyone. Uh, I know it is uh, Halloween day, and I know people are, a lot of people are going out tonight uh, to trick or treat and uh, do all that wonderful stuff. Uh, be safe um, wherever you are. Uh, for those of you on the East Coast that are suffering through Hurricane Sandy or the remnants of Hurricane Sandy, um, you all be safe too. Um, probably not going to be a lot of trick or treating out there, but certainly be safe and be careful. Um, don't eat too much candy. We'll try to do the same here and not eat too much candy or at least, you know, not save all this candy that we've got uh, for, you know, for the kids, for us, okay? And um, so, in the meantime, uh, I'm coming to you with another vlog. It's been a couple of days since you all have seen me, and that's because I haven't been feeling well. I'm still not feeling that great tomorrow. I'm always the doctor. I'm not really sure what's wrong with me. Um, I'm, you know, of course, having type 1 diabetes just makes everything a little bit more complicated, um, but not impossible, but just more complicated and stuff. And so I'm going to the doctor tomorrow to see um, what's going on. But today I kind of want to talk about, even in my sickness, uh, do you feel sexy? And I'm just saying this to the ladies. Um, not too long ago, I did a thing. There was a blog, and it was a, a Christian blog, and they were doing a thing called an uh, intimacy challenge. And it was for married men and women um, bringing intimacy, more intimacy into their marriages. And although um, I took a little test, and my husband and I have a good level of intimacy, we could definitely do better on intimacy and it means so much um, and one of the things they were challenging and I'm sure a lot of women have a lot of challenges is women's body image our image about our bodies and what our husbands think about our bodies and as women we're hard on ourselves um, we're definitely hard on ourselves um, we're almost to the point that we're um, dang near impossible on ourselves when it comes to our bodies and and what we look like and stuff you know um, we're it's never enough for us you know we're, we're down to a size zero and and that's never enough for some of us you know we just we have to go on and on and it's got to be pure perfection you know and stuff which there's no such thing as pure perfection you know you have the body you have um, it's the way it is for a reason and stuff, you know. Now, I'm not talking about women who are, you know, someone who is obese. That's unhealthy. And I would never tell anyone that it's okay to be that unhealthy, you know, and stuff. Um, but, hey, I'm overweight, okay, and at this point in my life. And would like to lose some weight. But I don't um, beat myself up about it. And I'm not hard on myself about it. And I don't go around putting myself down because really people think, oh, yeah, well, you know, you say those things and they motivate you. Yeah, well, really, they're not motivators more than you take those things into your spirit. And not only does it start to eat away at um, at who you are and, you're, and you're, you know, it starts to make you feel um, less confident, you also give those things to your children, you know, if you have grown children and stuff, they take up your own obsession um, with, um, you know, dieting or weight or whatever and stuff. Now, I don't diet. I'm a diabetic, so I don't diet. Diets don't really work for diabetics and how we are and stuff. Um, I try my best to eat healthy, but sometimes that can be hard because I have a couple of things wrong with me. I'm a diabetic. I also have what's called slow digestion or gastroparesis, which is like paralyzed stomach. So those things are very hard. There's lots of things that I can't eat. I can't eat um, whole hard vegetables and stuff, you know. So when I hear people talk about the raw vegetable diet, I'm always like, wow, do people know there are actually people out there that can't eat whole hard vegetables? I can't even eat them cut up. Um, you know, because they won't digest and uh, stuff, or they'll take forever to digest, and uh, it's a horrible feeling. And um, when you're like, the food's just sitting on your stomach and stuff, and it won't go anywhere and stuff. So there's certain, only certain types of food that I can eat at this point. At this point, my gastroparesis is not really terrible. It may be at some point I won't be able to eat at all, 
and stuff. But we're just praying that it doesn't ever get to that point and stuff. But more than that, the not dieting and trying to eat healthy and eating in a way that's suitable for who I am and for my diet and for my chronic disease and things like that. You know, I hope people think about that next time they're shouting about this diet or that diet or whatever is, you know, it's, it, there's people out there who are different than you that may not be able to do some of that stuff. So, so let's just, um, what it's talking about is uh, being sexy. Well, at this point in time, I know that I need to lose some weight. Okay, I'm not telling you how much weight, but I do need to lose some weight. <laughs> I do need to lose some weight and stuff, you know. And uh, like I say, I'm not beating myself up every day, looking in the mirror and on the scale and all the stuff and doing all this and doing all that. Um, really, you know, how you eat and dieting and, I mean, uh, not dieting, but exercising and eating balanced is just a lifelong thing and I eat balanced. I don't take anything out of my diet because I really can't. All that stuff I need to have work, you know, and stuff. There's stuff that I eat less of and then there's stuff that I eat more of. Uh, I'm, you know, in, in the pregnancy thing, it's a really weird sort of diet and stuff, you know, of eating things that most people wouldn't eat and stuff. So, you know, most people are like, well, let's take out carbs. Well, no, I have to actually eat carbs. I'm not supposed to eat a lot of carbs, but I have to eat carbohydrates because insulin needs something to work on and stuff. So I have to eat carbohydrates and stuff. So, um, you know, but it's trying to, you know, do stuff in a more healthy way and more balanced way. If there's something I really want, I don't deny myself. I can't really eat sugar. Um and stuff. Now, although, really, in a weird way, I can eat sugar, but I just can't eat a lot of it and stuff, you know, so, but I can't drink soda. That I can't do. But I can't eat sugar. So, um, the thing is, if I want something, because I have a sweet tooth, if I want something sweet, I give myself something sweet, and then I go ahead and take some extra insulin. Denying myself that thing would only make me super hungry. And instead of the one donut, I would eat 12, okay, and stuff. So, you know, and I'm not a big chocolate eater, so it's not a big deal. I hate chocolate. It's gross. Yeah, and stuff. But, but you have to know, you know, what it is that you need to eat for balance, you know. And uh, usually we don't, we, people now don't have any balance in their lives anywhere and so we're so to extremes and as women we get the brunt of that because of our bodies you know they reflect many things and stuff and I'm not saying that many people have diabetes and that's the reason that they're obese or overweight or all that kind of stuff there's no excuse for that there's no excuse for that and stuff but I am saying that people are different okay and um, I'm particularly different than a lot of people and stuff and so I have to take this as what it is the weird part is I started eating less and eating a strict diet that was set about by my doctor regarding my getting pregnant and I started eating a strict diet and eating just certain times of the day and eating really small meals and this and that and lo and behold I gained 10 pounds okay I couldn't believe it I was like Wow, you think I lose some weight, but I gained weight, okay, and stuff, and I exercise, so, you know, it's just, it was just sort of weird, and so, so, I don't know, bodies do things differently, they process stuff weirdly, and so, but really, I'm really proud of my body, this body has got me really far, and stuff, even with the diabetes and everything, I can't be prouder of my body, you know, and stuff, and I want to give some of my joints and this and that a little break. So, hey, it's time for me to try to lose some weight was the hope to, was to lose some weight. And I was hopefully losing some weight so I could gain some more weight as I get pregnant. The more heavier I am as a non-pregnant person, the less weight I can gain as a pregnant person and stuff. So, it matters, you know, and stuff. But feeling sexy about yourself, even as I'm getting ready to try to have a baby and have a big belly and all that stuff. It comes really not even from the outside part, but from the inside part, you know, and stuff. And there are some women that I have seen that are just, they exude sensuality and sexiness and confidence, um, 
you know, it's just wonderful to see. It's not like they're the best looking women ever. It's not like they're the slimmest women ever. I've seen some skinny women with some cap self confidence so low. So low. It doesn't matter. They don't exude anything except for kind of defeat and all this stuff. But, you know, I've seen some women that it's not they're the skinniest women. It's not that they're the best looking women that exude such great self confidence, you know, and stuff. And what they have, they show off really well. There are all, we all have good things about ourselves and about our bodies. Stuff that is just A number one about us. And most of us are always looking at the stuff that we don't like. That we forget about all the things that we like, that are good for us, that we need to enhance, okay, and stuff. Now, like I said, I'm, I'm a tad bit overweight, so I got some paunch belly here and stuff. But, you know, less about, you know, trying to make sure that I get the flat, flattest belly and stuff or not going out or all this stuff because I'm scared somebody's going to look at my stomach. I've got some nice long legs and a nice butt and some nice boobs and a nice smile and a nice face, okay? So I enhance all that stuff. Now, the thing about the short hair and all that stuff is that now I get to enhance my face even more. Everybody sees my earring. Everybody sees my face. They see my eyes. They see my smile. So I wear a little bit more makeup and all this stuff. You know, I've got some nice, long, graceful women's hands, okay, and stuff. And so... I like my hand. I enhance my hand. There are things about me that I enhance, but all of that comes from the inner being of me feeling self-confident about Virginia. I really like myself. I like who I am. I like who I become. I love all the people around me. They love me, which gives me good self-confidence, and I feel sexy, and I feel good. The weirdest thing happened um, last night. My husband and I were sitting on the couch, and he was talking to me, and I was wearing a pair of leggings. I'd been in the house, and I was wearing leggings and a sweater, and I'd been in the house pretty much all day because it's been rainy and just gray and miserable around here. And so when I haven't had any places to go, I'm not really feeling good and stuff. And so he was looking at me, and he was just like, who are you sure I'm sexy and all this stuff? And most of the time, I just laugh at my husband, but my husband is really serious. Now, you know, we, we aren't all married or attached to someone. So you've got to get that sexiness from inside and stuff. It's so nice to hear him say that. And a lot of women will be like, oh, it's just not true. I need to lose some weight. I need to do. Oh, well, women, stop qualifying compliments. Just take them and say thank you and smile. There's nothing worse than a woman qualifying a compliment. When you say something bad about yourself, after a while, the gentleman will be like, hey, maybe you're right, you know, and stuff. So stop doing that. So when a guy, oh, well, you know, I need to, no, no, just say thank you and stuff. And so I always smile when my husband gives me those compliments. That's not the first time. He gives me those compliments all the time. And I think, boy, we've been together a long time. You think some of your, you know, some of some of your horn doggedness would go down, but it hasn't. He finds me as sexy today as when he met me. And stuff. And so it's nice. It's a nice ego booster. Hey, I'm not gonna lie. It's a it's a nice thing to have the man you love think you're sexy and all this stuff and you're exude sexiness and everything. So, you know, or to think that you're beautiful and stuff. So, you know, but really inside I'd have to feel that way to really exude it. Inside I'd have to feel sexy and beautiful to really exude sexiness and beauty to him, you know, and stuff. There are some really I've seen some beautiful women who just are the saddest women ever. They are gorgeous. And they make me sad looking at them. You know, they're so sad. And they're so down on themselves about stuff. And it's just like, wow. And I've wondered all the time about women who are somehow, well, I'm looking for someone and I'd like to find somebody. But they have the worst self-confidence and they feel so bad about themselves. And I think to myself, who do you think would want that? Who wants that? Who wants this person who's so needy, because that's what that is, who's so needy that they always have to have somebody tell them how beautiful they are or how wonderful they are, or they start feeling bad about themselves and stuff. Somebody wants somebody who knows that she's beautiful, even if I'm not telling her that she's beautiful. Somebody wants somebody with good self-confidence. Now, believe me, there are men who love women with low confidence. 
okay and stuff i mean they they just can't wait to you know they're 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 rubbing their hands together waiting to find you so they can abuse you you know and stuff they love those sort of women and those needy women but really you're wondering why this woman over here is getting all these men drawn to her and stuff and she's just looking kind of average and then this other woman over here is really beautiful may not be having men draw to her at all it's the confidence it's who she is on the inside and it exudes outside you know i could put on all the great clothes in the world and still be defeated and act defeated and look defeated still be a nasty angry bitter person you know and stuff and so the thing is you know the thing is i don't do the makeup and i don't do the hair thing and i don't do the clothes thing because all that stuff doesn't matter when you feel good about yourself all that stuff reflects on the outside just kind of automatically you don't even have to try all that stuff just sort of reflects on the outside so me feeling good about myself will reflect on the outside when i'm sick and most people when they're sick, when I feel bad, I look horrible. I do. I don't comb my hair. I'm just looking kind of crazy. I've been sleeping, not getting up, and all this sort of stuff. And, you know, not brushing teeth and all this sort of stuff. So I look really bad. But on the first day after being sick that I feel well, I get, get up, take a shower, hey, do something to my hair, brush my teeth put my earrings on, put some nice clothing on, and I sit up because I feel better. So I want to exude that on the outside. Usually being depressed or being sick usually makes you look that way on the outside. You can always tell. You can always tell. Okay? And so, and so the thing is, when you feel better on the inside, when you come to that point of self-confidence and self-esteem, then it starts to reflect on the outside. Well, you wonder, how do I get self-confidence? You get self-confidence by, and I want to tell you this, for all the people who are struggling with self-confidence and issues of self-confidence, you may want to read some books. You may want to go to therapy and stuff. Because self-confidence just comes after a long kind of, you know, it can come after a long struggle of not. When I was in my 20s, I had issues about, eh, you know, well, it was back and forth with the self-confidence. And by the time I got to this age, you know, by the time I got to 40, I was just, you know what, I really do like who I am, you know, and who I'm becoming, you know. I have a, a good life and a good family, you know, and stuff. And I love my husband dearly. My husband loves me. We're happy, you know, and stuff. And we have a, a stable household. The things that I'm having my needs met. And I'm able to meet his needs, you know, and stuff. And it comes through different things, you know, and stuff. It may come for some people because they really like their job or where they work. Or they feel like they're serving and stuff. A good sense of self-confidence for me comes from me being of service. One way that I am of service is through this blog, Okay. And stuff, and so I always feel good about myself by being able to give information and advice and to help people and stuff. That always makes me feel good because I feel like I'm serving people and doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I get a good self a sense of self confidence when I spend time with my husband. That we have a deep and close friendship, not just as husband and wife, but we're also friends and stuff, you know, and I enjoy spending time with him, I enjoy spending time with friends, I enjoy spending time with my family, you know, and stuff, and I enjoy spending time alone, you know, and stuff, but it's those things, you know, those, those things that kind of, I have a, um, I'm starting to um, go back to church. It's some I have. I've been looking for a church and looking for a church. And so we're now going back trying to find a church. Because so my church community, my life as a Christian, gives me good self-esteem, you know, and stuff. And it's different for different people. That's what you have to find out. And maybe you struggle with this all your life. You don't know why you're struggling. And in your 20s, you'll struggle with it and stuff. But, you know, in your 30s and 40s, you're still struggling with it. And you're still trying to figure out what's wrong with me and why do I feel like I need to be perfect. Because there is no such thing as perfection. You'll never be perfect. 
and stuff. Why can't you accept yourself? It's part of part of it is accepting yourself for who you are. And then those things that, you know, really you're thinking, well, I don't find these useful or I don't find these things really good for me. Then letting those things go. Why can't you let them go? And, you know, and, and why can't you keep what's the good parts about you and celebrate that? Is there anybody else around you celebrating those things? And so, so all those things are going to matter and they will build up self-esteem and self-confidence. They'll build up sexiness and all this stuff. And we'll be talking a little bit more about, you know, you or what is, what is feminine mystique and all this sort of stuff, um, on a, on another day because I'm thinking some people have it a little bit backwards. It comes from inside out not outside in and stuff and so you know like i say when you feel more self-confident when you feel sexier on the inside you know when you're feeling that you're the dynamic woman that you are and stuff then all of that will reflect all on the outside and no one will be able to tell you you know that you're not sexy or you're not confident because those are the things that you will exude. Those are the things that you will be. Be what you want, you know. Be what you're trying to draw and stuff, you know. And so those things will happen. So we'll talk again later on, and I'll come back this sometime this week with a uh, blog about boundaries. It's been a while since I did one about that. And we'll talk about boundaries and uh, some other things. So you all have a happy Halloween. Um, I hope everybody enjoys their day and has lots of fun and be safe. Don't get sick eating too much candy. Okay, bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>